Okay, so this is Security Plus PBQ 14, Implementing Secure Script Environments. Let's take a look at this. You're the chief security analyst for your company. While examining web server logs, you notice few hypertext transfer protocol get requests that look suspicious. You need to examine the strings to investigate the activity. Also, part of your investigation inclu should include the type of attacks, attribution of attacks, evidence for your conclusions, and potentially recommendations for future protection against similar activity. Okay, so we know from this that HTTP GET requests, well, we should know that those are usually used for forms, for web forms. So we're probably thinking about some sort of injection or cross-site scripting attack with a web form. So we want to be, should be current on our OWASP, should be understanding uh, OWASP, uh, the top 10. So let's just think about that before we get into the question itself. So I'm thinking some sort of injection or SQL injection, uh, cross-site scripting attacks going on here. So let's take a look. So we have on 4-1-2019, so April Fool's Day at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Does this tell us anything? No. Okay. So we have a timestamp here. We have a get request here, get, and then certsindex.php. So it's getting from a website. Page name equals user in percent 20. This is a space foe.php. HTTP 1. Okay, that's a little strange because this uh, user should be like a user ID, but this seems like this is a little suspicious here from the host, getting it from this host, from IP address using uh, Mozilla, using Firefox, and an iPhone. So he's running Firefox on an iPhone, or I mean, it's trying to detect this is probably an iPhone using, or Mac OS, so some sort of Apple device. Hmm, okay, and it's asking us for what type of attack, what type of attack is depicted here? I wanna say, say this is a, probably an injection attack just because of this character string here because they're trying to this looks like uh, SQL to me I think so let's see if SQL injections here cross-site request forgery directory traverse SQL injection XML injection and cross-site scripting I think it's probably SQL injection and what's given away here is this, you know, percent 20 is hexadecimal for a space. Uh, so we shouldn't have a, a space for the user ID there. So that, that kind of tells me that they're trying to just get into the SQL database by inputting this character string. So I think that makes sense. Well, let's see, right after this, we had another attack, 331.14. So within a minute, well, about a minute of the other attack, if assuming this is an attack, get slash partners index PHP. Okay, same web page. Page equals percent 2F, percent 2F, percent 2F. These are slashes, I, I believe. 2F ETC percent, yeah, these are slashes. Percent two F password HTTP one. The host. Okay, so what they're doing here is they're trying to navigate to the password folder, assuming this is a Linux uh, operating system that's hosting the website. So what they're doing is they're trying to uh, navigate to that password folder, and basically what they're doing is they're trying to, no matter what folder they're in currently, they're going to try with that double dot slash to navigate to the top level and then from the top level of the directory or the file system they would navigate then to the etc folder and the password that's why there's so many of these just in case there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen in case there's like 14 levels of folders that the website's being hosted in because remember a website is just a series of files and they're hosted on a in a you know, a normal file 
directory. So it's, it's just the same as you would have an operating system um, on your computer. So I think this is pretty safe to say this is some sort of directory traversal. They're trying to navigate to the password folder and this is slash etc slash password that shows you it's a Linux. They're assuming it's run on Linux. Again, this is a uh, Mozilla. So that's Firefox, probably on an iPhone. So same sort of iOS, Mac OS um, operating system or iPhone operating system. Okay, so that would be probably directory traversal. I think that makes the most sense there. Okay. And then could these attacks be from the same actor? Well, yeah, I think absolutely. I mean, they're within a minute of one another and they're we're detecting that they're probably from the same type of device. So I think that makes the most sense there. Okay, and then what controls on the web server will prevent these types of attacks from being successful? Okay, so to protect, I always like to think about it. You wanna think about your answer before you put in or before you select the drop down. And drop down is going to have a lot of red herrings, a lot of similar action. So I think this is probably, you know, these are injection attacks, SQL injection, uh, directory traversal. What we want to do is we want to have some sort of whitelist or blacklist to prevent these types of inputs. We shouldn't be allowing on a form a user to be inputting special characters like the percent or the dots. Um, I mean, the percent is really and dots, you shouldn't have that in this type of form. Okay, so basically, imagine this is what's happening is that we have a web form here and the attacker is inputting this string of characters in that web form. That's not, it's not what you wanna have being input in your web form. So we do is like some sort of whitelist or blacklist. Anti-malware import, inbound port 81 denial. Wow, that's specific. Input, val yeah, input validation, whitelist and back blacklist. That's what we want to have here. And then logging enabled. I mean, that's good to have, but input validation is the most important thing to have here. And then what piece of evidence points to the nature of the traffic's origin? What piece or pieces of evidence points to the nature of the traffic's origin? Let me find my face here for a second. Okay, traffic date timestamp, HTTP 1.1, attack attempt to type user agent string. What is this asking us? What pieces of evidence point to the nature of the traffic's origin? I guess just what, uh, this is a very confusing way to say that. I think what they're trying to ask is what, what pieces of information from these two requests identify the attacker? or identify, yeah, I think that's a good way to say it. Identify the attacker. Well, the date and timestamp is very suspicious. They're within a one minute. So I'm gonna select that. And then, okay, user agent string. This makes sense too. I don't think these two are gonna matter here. HTTP 1.1. Okay, we see that here and here. Uh, I don't think that's gonna matter just because you know most of the requests are probably, most of the requests that are being made here are gonna be using that same uh, version of HTTP. I don't think that's, that's relevant. Attack attempt type. I mean, in some sense, you know, in some senses, if you if you have a very advanced security team, you can identify the attackers based on what type of attack they're using. With this type of attack, it's probably too generic to do that. But you know, if you ha say you have a specific ransomware type of attack that you know you're you're being targeted, or there's certain techniques, some advanced uh, solutions or advanced security teams can help can identify those usually APT groups, advanced persistent threat groups, by the nature of how they conduct the attack. But that's usually done, so I don't think that applies here, but that is possible. I just wanna let you guys know that's possible. For the test, 
I think you just want to keep it very simple. We want to every every time we look at these test questions, we don't look at this inside of a vacuum. So we're not we're not considering all attacks. Okay, so in all attacks, we would probably select all three of these. Okay, for any type of web attack. But for this specific attack, we need to look at this just as its own package deal. There's no external influencers on this uh, question. We just want to examine this question without bringing any biases we have or any experience that we have, our outside experience. We just want to look at what they've given us here. And from what they've given us here, I think we have the timestamp being within one minute and the fact that it's coming from the same type of device, probably an iPhone. So I think this is probably right here. Let's try it out. Okay, okay, good. All right, so let's see what they say and see if I was thinking correctly because it's one thing to get it right. There's another thing to get it right because you thought of it correctly. <laughs> All right, with the first attack attempt, the clue that leads the security analyst to believe is SQL injection is the use of the percent 20 FO. Okay, so that was correct. That was the right thing. There's always one thing that's going to clue you in on why it's something or why it's not that thing. So that is the thing they want us to clue in on, and I was able to pick that up. And the get request string. However, the second attack attempt, the attacker is clearly trying to reach the ETC password. This one's very obvious. I mean, you can see this and understand that that stands out. Uh, Try to reach this directory through the use of relative addressing. Yeah, relative addressing would be the use of these uh, these commands of dot dot slash, for example, to try and force some sort of directory traversal. Bypassing the web page, attempting to gain access to the operating system. Yeah. Now a lot of times, you know, like it says, a lot of times these type of attacks are they fall flat, but you know there are very unsecure websites out there, so. If, these attacks still work. And a lot of times attackers, they don't spend, it's not like you have somebody sitting at the computer trying these attacks. Uh, what you'll have are automated bots that'll scan thousands and thousands of websites every minute, try different attacks, just try these attacks over and over again. They try and play statistics, the statistics game to try and find a website that an attack like this is gonna work. Two pieces of evidence lead the analysts to believe the activity might come from the same actor or device date timestamp were within short succession and the user agent string was the same. Well, similar, wasn't the same. Uh, while this is exactly a smoking gun to an attacker, it's a path an analyst can use to a potential attribution. Both these attacks can be prevented with input validation in places on the uh, server. With SQL injection, the directory traversals occur. It's due to poor input validation. Yeah, usually. All right, great. Well, I think that was very helpful. Great job. I think we got it. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining in. Hope that was helpful. Hope you have a great day.